if we're real, you went on this show to get famous. This had to be the wildest season of Love is Blood yet. In some ways, some of the best moments, and in some ways, some of the very worst. Kristen here, we're gonna talk about the entire fourth season of Love is Blind, plus the reunion. Let's break it down. Starting off just like talking about the season overall, I really enjoyed it. I'm all for love, but I think it's fun to set the stage of like, this is the format of Love is Blind, and then four seasons in, it kind of explodes and goes all over the place, and there's a lot of drama and chaos. I know not everybody is into the drama and chaos. We want to see the love as well. But I mean, that's what makes it entertaining. That's what makes you want to come back and watch it every week because you're like, I cannot believe this is happening right now. And I think like the reality is in a show like this, it's just going to get more and more dramatic as it goes along because the first season I think is the only really authentic season where people didn't really know what the show is. They don't know what's going to happen. Is it really going to blow up? And it was so successful that now any season after that is just going to be... No offense, people trying to chase clout. You might say you're looking for love, but the reality is you're going on a reality television show that is very successful, that is known for, you know, making quote unquote stars or influencers out of people. And I think this season in particular, I felt like we did get to go deeper in some aspects of, you know, people's relationships, in the pods, even in the lounges, seeing what was going on there. And in some ways it was even more toxic and full of mean girl drama. Let's break it down by the couples. So let's start off with Brett and Tiffany. I really love their relationship. They honestly reminded me a little bit of my husband and myself in some ways in that they're, you know, one of the older couples of the group and that they just like knew what they wanted, you know, like they've experienced life. And so when you know, you know. And I also felt like Brett and Marshall and Kwame were having these really great conversations throughout the season of just like black men being more vulnerable and emotional and in touch with their feelings. And I really appreciated seeing that. I mean, they even mentioned on the show that like, you don't see that all the time on television or movies in general, let alone a reality show. So to see them being so open and vulnerable, I really loved that. And I thought it was really great representation. Not a lot of guys that look like us talk about stuff like this. I also think Brett and Tiffany were having some of my favorite conversations around like finance and things. Like that's important. That's stuff that you're going to need to like be able to deal with when you're out in the real world. And I wish that more couples would have conversations like that, particularly in the pods themselves. Because I feel like, you know, by the end of the season, in these reunions, you're hearing things like, oh, well, you know, I don't think we're actually that great of a match. I don't think you're very motherly, things like that. Like, I don't want to have kids. I don't want to, you know, settle down. And it's like, wait a minute, why didn't you talk about this in the pods? Isn't that the whole point is to see like if you're on the same page about things in relationships, like it's one thing to like enjoy similar hobbies, but like you need to know if you're on the same path in terms of how you want to live your life. Like, do you want to have kids? Do you really want to get married? So I think that they need to start having a little bit of tougher conversations like that in the pods. Seems like sometimes people are a little bit shocked when they get to like the wedding stages and they're having these conversations still. It's like, what have you been talking about this whole time? Brett and Tiffany didn't really have a lot of drama in the season. You know, they made up some stuff towards the end to make it seem like, you know, oh, is she really gonna get married to him? Oh, is she so stressed by the wedding? They were just kind of like playing things up. But I think when you get to the reunion, it's disappointing because you have this really successful couple. They're the first ones to talk and they get shut down immediately. You barely got to learn anything about what's going on with them because they didn't have drama. And it seems like that's really what was driving this season. Like, as much as I love the drama, this is supposed to be a show about love and you have this couple that from the very beginning like didn't really have any problems. They knew they were the right ones for each other. So I guess maybe is that boring to the host? And instead they turn them into these memes of like sleeping Tiffany and bougie Brett. And you know what? Like, Girl, get your beauty sleep. Be bougie, Brett. Like, you clearly like nice things. I like nice things, too. What's wrong with that? Getting into Chelsea and Kwame. Chelsea was clearly very strong-willed. She knows what she wants. That's great. Kwame seemed to be very wishy-washy the whole season. Obviously, he loved Chelsea. They got married. But it also seemed like he was compromising so much or not speaking up when it came to what he really wanted in their relationship. Do you feel like you're questioning? I feel as though I'm somebody who tends to compromise a lot. You also had these moments with Micah in Mexico that I think, you know, on one hand, it's like, this is a reality show. How do you know who's going to end up with who? What if, you know, Micah and Kwame talk and decide actually they do want to be together? I mean, look at the whole Zach situation after all. But if you're trying to be like loyal to this person you just got engaged to, I think you need to be a little bit more aware 
and just like own up to it. Like I think it was very clear that Kwame was flirting with Micah. That maybe he was second guessing himself. That maybe he did still feel something for her. And then in the reunion, he's like, oh no, like, you know, I have to apologize to my wife. Like that, it wasn't really what it seemed. Kwame was gonna propose to her. Or at least the way they edited it, they made it seem like Kwame was gonna propose to her and then she broke up with him at the last minute. He could have just owned up to it and been like, yep, sorry I made a mistake, but I'm with Chelsea now and you know, we're cool and we're in love and I don't care about what's going on with Mike anymore. I think instead the reunion around Kwame and Chelsea really much became talking about things that were not really that important like is Barbara really his sister? Going off of that from Micah into the stuff with Irina, the two of them were mean girls the whole season. In the reunion when they brought it up, they played this whole tape showing all of the moments where they were being mean girls together and then they only put the heat on Irina. And then Micah was just swimming smoothly through the entire reunion, not having a worry. She even says at one point, oh, like people haven't really been focused on me so I like forgot I was here, you know? I think that that was a mistake. They really should have been putting the heat on Micah and Irina equally together and instead they kind of made Micah a victim in her own relationship situation. When I don't think that Micah's a victim. They both did mean girl things, they both flirted with other people. And then spinning off of that, the whole thing with Micah and Paul in the reunion, Vanessa Lachey was really gunning for Paul in a way that did not really make any sense. They're bringing up weird internet rumors. Did he slap a bridesmaid's butt? Did he not? I think if the answer is no, then like why even bring this up? If he was gonna like reveal some big tea, sure, mention it. Otherwise it just feels like you're doing this like deep dive into like internet theories that were not part of the show that are confusing to people who maybe don't know what's going on outside of the show. It was just weird. And if you're gonna ask that question, you're not gonna ask Micah what her reaction is to that. And I just feel like the way that they answered each other in the reunion about things that happened in the season felt very much like, I don't know anything about you. Paul's like, oh, well, I was allowed to flirt with Irina based off of like the, the level of boundaries that we set. Whereas Micah made it sound like that hurt her feelings but she also did the same thing with Kwame. Or they were going so hard for the way that Micah was like, okay, Paul, I'm gonna let you be the one to say yes or no first at the wedding. The best thing that I can do for us is give you the opportunity to answer first. And she's like, well, I didn't think that you were gonna say how you truly felt if I said yes first. I thought you would have just said yes to say yes. Whereas this man is like the most overthinking person you know, scientific mind who literally is like not going to just say yes to appease someone. Like he's going to go with what he felt is the best option. It's a tremendous amount of risk. And then they bring up the whole idea of like the reason that he said no to her was because he didn't find her nurturing or motherly and you know, maybe didn't want to have kids anymore. Again, you should be having this conversation in the pods. But the fact that Micah and Vanessa were so confused by it is like, where, where does the connection not compute? Micah literally was a mean girl the whole season. You see all these things that she's done, the people that she's friends with, from Irina to Shelby. I don't think yeah. this is it. Your friends were a reflection of you. You got to see how nice Tiffany's friends were, how you know much they knew her, how funny they were when they were meeting Brett, and, and how much they supported her. And then you see Micah and Irina laughing at people that are upset in the pods or flirting with people and cheersing to failed proposals and you know, just calling out people in like negative weird ways. So based off of everything that they've seen and experienced, like, yeah, I could see Paul being like, yeah, she's not a nurturing person. She's not very motherly. She's kind of a mean girl. I get that like sometimes the edit is weird and like maybe, you know, things happened in different orders, or maybe, you know, things are kind of twisted a little bit, but the reality is you did those things and that's why they were able to put them together on camera. It's not like they're chopping up every word and trying to force together a sentence. If you said it, you said it, you know, if you did it, you did it. And I get what Paul was saying, you know, if she's not a nurturing person, you might be able to bring that up, but you can't just like force people to change who they are. Like that's how this person is. That's their personality. That's how it is. We've talked a little bit about Irina, so let's get into more of Irina, Zach, and Bliss's little love triangle. First of all, the chaos, right? Of just the idea that this man is going to pick Irina over Bliss. You just see all of the, the things that Bliss was doing to show that she was a great match for him. Making him cupcakes for his birthday. They had so many similar, like weird little things from the owls to, you know, the award-winning song that everybody knows that they kind of made seem like nobody knew. 
everyone knows I Hope You Dance. It's a very classic wedding song, but still, you know, the fact that they had that connection um, versus Irina, who seemed like she just wanted to beat out Bliss for Zach. But he proposes to Irina, and she didn't really seem into him after that. Mexico, she was clearly, you know, trying to block any kisses, didn't want to be around him, didn't want to be close to him, very dismissive of him, rolling her eyes. And honestly, I think if I was Zach at that point, I would have been like, I don't want to do this anymore. Let's like, just forget about it. I mean, he was clearly trying really hard. And then in the reunion, Irina made it seem like the production team kind of made her stay, like talk it out with Zach. And then she was afraid to talk to him and just kind of like kept prolonging it, but just kept rolling her eyes. And she blamed it on mental health, which like, if you're dealing with something like understandable, but that doesn't mean you have to be mean to people. And also you were kind of mean to people the entire season. So, you know, if that was the moment where you were having like a mental crisis, like I think you could have handled it in a different way or been like, no, I really need to leave the show if that's how you feel like they can't hold you there and force you. I respected when Zach was like, I feel like we're an old married couple that hates each other, like let's just end this. And she was sort of like, I had felt this way since the beginning, since I first saw you. And you know, again, just like very mean little jabs. Honestly, during the reunion, I was kind of like, why even apologize? If you're trying to be sympathetic and you really feel bad, sure. But also people like drama. You could have turned yourself into the next mean girl of reality television by being like, well, I didn't really like him, sorry. You know, like, it was interesting to me that both Irina and Micah were going the sympathetic route versus just like doubling down and being like, yeah, I'm a mean girl, put me on the next reality show. During the reunion, there was some big moments with Zach being like, you're just on this show for clout, you're just here to become famous. If we're real, you went on this show to get famous. <laughs> Which, I get, but I don't know if it's necessarily fair because again, the reality is you're all there to get some kind of clout or be famous or build your brand. You can say you're not, but this is the fourth season of a very successful reality show where everyone has gone on to get some type of clout or be on other reality shows. So I think it's a little bit hypocritical to be like, you're just here for fame. I think everybody there is. But I will say also, Zach was really the one kind of calling things out when Vanessa and Nick were doubling down on like the wrong things. You know, he was even defending Paul and I kind of appreciated him for that. And I also thought the reunion was the first time that I really believed Zach and Bliss as a couple and was like, okay, I get it now because you know, the whole time their relationship was so quick. Things didn't work out with Irina. She's like, oh, you dodged a bullet, Ooh. And now she's starting this relationship you know, and two weeks later getting married to this man while also feeling like second fiddle, it's feeling like a second choice. So the fact that their relationship seemed like one of the stronger ones was really like nice to see for them. And finally, we have to get into Marshall and Jackie and Josh. Marshall said it best, he really got the short end of the stick the entire season. You know, this is a man who has been open and vulnerable and told Jackie what he wanted, which was her. And she was like, okay, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna go for this guy that's maybe not the type of guy that I normally go for. I normally go for the tough guy like Josh. But really how tough was Josh? Because the minute that Marshall said in the pods, I wanna go for Jackie, I'm gonna propose to her, she's the one for me. Josh was like, oh, okay, never mind then friend, I back up, you can have her, you can have her, I give up. He didn't fight for her. He could have easily been like, no, I'm going for her too. I really care about her if he was such a, a tough guy, you know? And let her make that decision versus just backing out. And then also, uh, if you've seen everything online, Josh also got engaged to another cast member named Monica on the show. So he had been making this whole thing out like, oh, Jackie's it for me, Jackie's it for me. He got engaged to someone else. It didn't work out. Then I guess went to go talk to Jackie, but it's very confusing about how all these timelines really work. And I wish that things were a little clearer in that way because these Instagram posts that Monica went up with make it sound like they broke up when filming stopped. But clearly Josh was going after Jackie during filming because it's on camera. So I don't really know what went on there. And you know, for, for those who might not know, there were actually three other couples that got engaged in the season that they didn't show, which I think is always so unfortunate, but it was Josh and Monica. The other two couples were Jimmy and Wendy and JP and Ava. So, you know, there's a lot that we don't get to see and other couples that get engaged that we don't get to see. None of them are still together now. And obviously Josh and Jackie are together now. So 
It's just wild. So going back to Marshall and Jackie, they start off in a good place, but I feel like in the middle of like the Mexico trip, Jackie just has like a lot of personal issues going on that they don't really explain. So it feels really confusing when you're watching because all of a sudden she's just kind of like having these breakdowns and is really upset and you don't really know why. Based off of information outside of the show, it seemed like her father was sick and she's the one that everyone's relying on in her family and she was feeling a lot of pressure. But it's unfortunate that that kind of stuff was seeping into what's supposed to be like uh, a, a nice time to get to know this person that you're going to try to spend the rest of your life with. And from what I could tell, it felt like Jackie wasn't giving Marshall a chance to even kind of come in and support her and was very much just kind of like putting a wall up when all these things started to happen. So how can you really be in this relationship with this person if you're not going to be able to be there for them in the good times and the bad or you're not allowing them to do that and it seemed like because she was dealing with so many things and, she, and Marshall was so emotionally available to her that she kind of took that as a negative and that he wasn't like masculine enough for her and of course there's like the the leaked text and things and you know the miscommunications between them it just seemed like Jackie was going hard and making jokes on Marshall and that he wasn't allowed to do the same not to say that Marshall is perfect either I mean he definitely made some comments that were rude making it seem like she's a project that he's working on to fix or that he's going to help better her when really like you hope you come into these relationship whole and you can just kind of like come together in love not being like two halves of a whole and you need that person to fix yourself so to speak another thing they brought up with them was the ring which I thought was such a weird situation. Marshall wanted the ring back. He asked like once or twice. She said no. She kept the ring. That's it. Yes, Netflix buys all of their rings. They get to choose them, but they, you know, Netflix bought it. So I guess I could see being like, well, Netflix bought me this fancy ring. I'm just going to keep it. But also, why would you even want a ring from somebody that you don't love anymore, or that you don't care about? It feels like kind of holding on to baggage a little bit. And then to claim that he was going to give it to someone else because he went on one other date with someone it feels like a reach. It feels like a reach. And I just thought that whole section of the reunion got so messy because not only did Marshall not get to go through the entire experience and get to the point where he can decide, am I going to say yes or no at the altar, but he also didn't even get to really say his piece or talk to Jackie and Josh because they decided to not come to the reunion and do the whole thing in a virtual interview with Vanessa. She was really, really sympathetic to them and very you know, light on them. And it just seemed like if you're not in a couple, she's coming for you. A lot happened in that video. Let's, let's, okay. just, let's just say that. I didn't think Marshall deserved that. One of the things that she said when he brought up like the fact that they weren't there was, well, can you understand how she feels and consider how she feels in this situation? And it's just like, hold up. Consider it the other way. Look at how this guy feels. He's gotten the short end of the stick the whole time. And now he has to think about them in this situation too. He can't even like really say what he wants to and have real closure. I didn't think that was fair at all. Overall, the season was messy, but it was fun. The reunion was messy in a not so fun way. I mean, we all know already the chaos of what went on with Netflix not being able to stream it for everybody in this quote unquote live reunion. First of all, I don't think the reunion needed to be live. I think that was a huge mistake. You're just letting everyone talk in circles. Nobody's getting to the point. I think it would have been much cleaner to just pre-tape it, edit it down so that we get the bites that we're supposed to get and not have it be all chaotic. Maybe in that case, Josh and Jackie would have come. In the long run, it wasn't worth it. They hyped up this live event that was so anticlimactic. Nothing really came out of it. We got answers to things that nobody cared about. I will say Vanessa and Nick, this was one of the first times I felt like they were actually asking tough questions and asking the hard questions, but it felt like they were asking them to the wrong people. You know, they were going really, really hard on Marshall, on Paul, who I didn't think deserved that. And they went so light on Micah, on Jackie. It didn't make sense. They were also just not good listeners. As a host, you know, a lot of people can read teleprompters. But as someone who is a journalist, you know, you really need to be listening and paying attention to what's going on and what people are saying so you can ask follow-up questions. It's one thing if it's like, okay, this is supposed to be live, so we need to just, like, stay on track and get to the point. But there were so many things that were brought up that they could have followed up on, and they just didn't because they weren't listening. And that is just another testament of why this should have just been pre-recorded, because they could have had time to ask those follow-up questions and then it be edited down to be more succinct. It did feel like there was a bias there. It did feel like unless you're in a couple, unless you're trying to have a baby, 
We don't care. And that's the other thing. The fact that they harp on like, all right, when's the first Love is Blind baby coming? There are Love is Blind babies. Go look at the, the couple that just had a baby from Love is Blind Japan. Or apparently there's another couple from Love is Blind Brazil that have a toddler. So like push people into that and ask those kind of prying questions feels super uncomfortable because first of all, these people have only known each other for one full year. That's it. That's not a lot of time, okay? Sometimes people have issues with having kids. Maybe you don't want them. Maybe you're struggling to have them. You know, maybe you want to just like be in your relationship for longer than one year. You know what I mean? Like that just seems like the narrative that they keep pushing and it it's awkward and it's inappropriate and I don't want to hear any more about Auntie Vanessa. And the fact that they brought Bartis in to ask that question. Nobody wants to see this man anymore. And if you are going to bring him in, Maybe also bring in other people from Love is Blind to ask questions. I would have loved to see like Lauren and Cameron or some of the other couples come in and be like, okay, let me ask a question now. Or if you're doing a live reunion, have fans ask questions. What was the point of a live reunion? No point, no point other than to ramble and not give us any real tea. Especially because like I said, Jackie and Josh were not there and that's the big situation that people wanted to hear about. So I don't know, I do think that the reunion kind of had Love is Blind end in a very like awkward place. As much as I enjoyed the ups and downs of this season and following these people, it's just it's just a lot of chaos. I also think it's just so interesting how like these edits and, and seeing people in all these different seasons of things can really just like change how you feel about them. I feel like none of it is real. I guess a great example of that would be someone like Damien, who in the first season of Love is Blind, everyone was sort of like, oh, well, Giannina did this and Giannina did that and everyone was feeling bad for him. Then you get into the act of the altar and it's completely the opposite. Everyone feels bad for her and they hate him. Then you get into perfect match and the man was so boring. It's like, what, what is going on? I think a lot of it is like the edit and who they're focused on and you know, what they want to make work. I mean, again, people say the things they say and that's what they're using, but it's just so interesting how like, you know, people could think, let's say Zach is awkward this whole season and now in the reunion be rooting for him or be seeing Micah as a mean girl the whole season and then now she's the victim in the reunion. So what is it going to be in the after the altar? You know what I mean? That's why these shows, they start to feel so fake because they're so overly produced that people just want clout. I do think some of it is also cultural. You know, you see shows like Love is Blind and it's all about the drama. But then you see like Love is Blind Japan and it really was about love and respect and family. And these people were really serious and they didn't go to the wedding day just to be there. If they decided they weren't gonna be together, they did that ahead of time so that they didn't have to like embarrass their families or put them through all this drama. It just depends on the kind of show you wanna watch. I did have fun with the show, but the reunion just really was such a mess. I'd love to hear what you guys thought about this season of Love is Blind, about the reunion. So let me know in the comments. Are you ready for new hosts? Are you ready for some kind of switch up in the format? Is there a way that they can really focus on, you know, actual love? Or do we just wanna go the drama route? Do you think they need some therapists to come in there to, you know, just like, make things a little bit clearer for these contestants. I think honestly they might need someone like that to come in and just help a little bit. Um, because there is a lot of like baggage that people are carrying and you know, maybe people would have more clarity when it comes to situations like, you know, the relationships between Marshall and Josh and Jackie or Bliss and Zach and Irina. If they had someone there that could help guide them versus being locked up in these pods with too much alcohol and no sunlight, you know what I mean? So. Let me know what you guys think. Consider subscribing if you like my videos, and if you want to talk more TV and movies with me outside of the comments section, check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash kmaldo. If you like this one, you can check out more of my videos right over here. See ya!